Good morning, everyone. Um, it's 11 o'clock. In fact, it's uh, just gone one minute past 11. Um, we seem to be having quite a few people on the line already. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, plus 3, I think it's about 15 or 16. Um, I would like to uh, proceed unless we know there are uh, people battling to um, to connect. Um, otherwise, I propose that we get started so that we can uh, get this meeting underway uh, the way we ought to. This is the virtual uh, pre-tender meeting for Tender 6015B with a long title Grave Relocation, Exhumation and Reburial Services for the Site Establishment Area. Uh, it will be held uh, today. It starts at 11 o'clock, and I think we uh, are well on time for, uh, for that. <clears throat> um, so welcome to the meeting. This is, um, as you will notice, a Microsoft Teams live event. Uh, there's no uh, in-person or physical meeting, uh, neither this meeting or any other uh, such pretender meeting um, intended. Um, a recording of the live event will be made available on the website after the uh, meeting, uh, so you can just follow the, the normal tender bulletins um, uh, website link and you will find um, the uh, recording uploaded there. You will have to give us a little bit of time to do that, uh, but then uh, the link will be there. <clears throat> the um, all other documentation, um, if we look at right the last bullet here, all other uh, documentation, addenda and um, clarifications uh, will also be available um, at this very uh, location. Uh, as a presenter, and there will be one or two others, um, we will share content and we have voice functionality. Everyone else um, does not have any voice functionality, so you can only hear and listen and see on the screen, of course. Um, and um, Question and answers will be uh, handled at the end. Um, at, at the end of this uh, presentation, uh, there are about 30 odd slides that uh, will be presented uh, by various people. You can use the uh, chat functionality uh, on, uh, it's visible on your little tab screen um, um, for for any questions that you that you have, so you have to type in your your um, question in the chat box uh, and send it, and uh, we will then address them um, at the end of the presentation. Uh, all the questions will uh, be formally answered as well, so the uh, responses that you may give now. Um, uh, later at the end uh, will be recorded and also formalized um, in, in, a, in a document that will be uploaded. Um, maybe important to know that um, your correspondence um, will only be directed uh, via email to the email address provided 6015b procurement at limataha.co.ls. Um, you um, will not contact anyone within LHDA or Lima Taha uh, directly with, with any queries in connection with the tender. Um, we will not address those uh, queries. Uh, if you pick up the phone uh, or, or come to our office, uh, you will have to do it all via email and we will then respond uh, to all uh, the registered uh, interested tenderers. Um, to, to respond to those uh, queries. And those will all come in the form of clarifications. Uh, one, clarification is, one clarification has already been sent, uh, so you'll, you'll know how that uh, procedure then uh, works. Uh, maybe to note that this 
presentation is for information purposes only, uh, ready to uh, assist you in identifying key aspects um, of the tender. And of course, if there are uh, issues that are unclear, uh, you can uh, use this opportunity to uh, raise your, your queries in the chat box or then otherwise via the uh, email address as uh, provided. Um, and I think the last bullet we have already said, the tender documents, uh, written and, and issued addenda and uh, official, uh, officially written responses uh, from LSA to all the questions are the only communication with contractual standing. So this presentation in itself has no contractual standing. Uh, that's why we say it's only for information purposes uh, that we have this um, uh, meeting and this presentation. Right, safety moment. This is a, a major uh, construction tender, so we um, are uh, aware of uh, safety risks. Um, of course, this particular tender and, and, and uh, the work that you will be doing will happen in communities, so we thought it uh, appropriate to uh, maybe point your attention to that. Um, of course, we will be working in and among local residents, including children, um, and there's uh, livestock roaming around uh, within the villages and, and uh, the wider area. Uh, we will be using informal roads, and some areas have poor access, so we uh, always need to be uh, aware of um, our driving skills. Uh, no speeding is, is allowed. Uh, the, uh, there are uh, uh, speed limits uh, uh, posted in, in places, but in most places not. Uh, so we advise you um, as tenderers uh, when you do come to sites um, to uh, adhere to the speed limits and to be aware of your surroundings and, and um, drive in such a way that we show respect. Respect boundaries, of course, when we um, are on site and we are out of our vehicles, uh, there are no fences in many places. Uh, we need to uh, respect boundaries, uh, social and cultural boundaries. Um, we want to point out that littering is a problem in the, in the uh, construction areas. Uh, we need to be uh, concerned uh, and considerate in, in the way we dispose of our um, uh, waste that we, that we generate, uh, even from our vehicles, but especially when um, we are on site and we have a, a longer term presence on site. Uh, we don't want to see any lettering. Uh, with respect to communities, uh, we need to be aware that we must on, on inform and consult with them and seek their consent. We can't just barge in and, and do things. Uh, it's also just a, an act of courtesy uh, towards the communities that we are working in. Uh, we must be mindful this is a construction area. Um, as you will see on the next uh, slide, uh, this is what uh, the area kind of looks like when, when construction is uh, uh, on a high note, um, uh, big uh, construction vehicles will be driving around. There's, of, of course, a lot of uh, dust and disturbance. Uh, but in the meantime, people are trying to uh, make a living, and, and we need to respect that at all uh, times. Uh, the next couple of slides will be a, a general overview, overview of the phase two uh, project. And that will be um, handled by um, uh, Mayor Macananello, I think, is, is uh, the person who will uh, handle that. Um, thank you very much, Frank, and good morning to everyone. As Frank has indicated, my name is Macananello Kumalo. I am responsible for managing environmental, social, and public health issues in the phase two of the Lesotho Highlands Water Project. So I'm going to give you just a summary of the phase two project and uh, the scope, what we have been doing to date, uh, 
on the engineering and environmental and social front. I'm going to take you through how far we've gone with community engagement. And just in summary, the safety, health and environmental and quality framework. And then my colleague will take on the anti-corruption policy as well as, as the preferential procurement. Um, the, the map just indicates uh, where our project is located uh, within the, the Lesotho, the country of Lesotho. You can see the small uh, bin over there. Um, in in 1986, the, the two governments uh, signed a treaty uh, for the development of a Lesotho Highlands Water Project, which will be implemented in a number of phases. You may be aware that uh, phase one, construction of phase one of the project has been completed and it's in the operations and maintenance phase. So for phase two, uh, an agreement was signed between the two governments in 2011. Uh, hence, we, we have uh, the project that we are currently implementing as phase two. So the project has been managed um, by the two governments, as I have indicated, the government of Lesotho as well as the government of South Africa. So there is a body that has been uh, formed, which is the Lesotho Highlands Water Commission. Uh, this body has a representation from the two governments and it oversees the implementation of um, the Lesotho Highlands Water Project. Uh, we have uh, the Lesotho Highlands Development Authority, which is uh, responsible for implementing the project in Lesotho. And then we have the trans caledon Trans Tunnel Authority, which is responsible for implementing the project on the South African side. Uh, below the, the Lesotho Highlands Water Commission, we have um, the, the two boards of directors. As I've already indicated that we have um, the implementing arm on the Lesotho side as well as on the South African side. So on the Lesotho side, we have a Lesotho Highlands Water Develop, I mean Lesotho Highlands Development Authority Board, which uh, has a, a technical subcommittee that uh, specifically manages the phase two implementation of phase two issues. And then we have a Lesotho Highlands Development Authority, which uh, oversees the implementation of, of the project uh, on the Lesotho side. Uh, I am based in the project management unit for, for the Lesotho Highlands Development Authority. This unit has been established specifically to, to manage the implementation of the phase two of the, of the project. Uh, the project management unit is made up of different specialists, uh, uh, including the different engineers. Uh, we have finance specialists, we have procurement specialists and contracts management specialists, and uh, we are based at the LHDA. Uh, we have procured different consultants that uh, manage different components. Uh, including construction, design and construction supervision, including our resettlement action plan consultants, uh, public health consultants, you know, uh, for, for those different components. We also uh, liaise with different uh, stakeholders, including the stakeholders from, from, South, from South Africa and the Lesotho government. Uh, we, we engage with uh, national non-governmental organizations. We have uh, community-based organizations that we also are working with. Uh, lastly, we have our contractors, uh, which we have engaged to implement different components, and um, the successful tenderer will be uh, categorized as, as a contractor, as shown on the, 
on the organogram. Um, the phase two scope, we have uh, two components, uh, the water transfer component as well as the hydropower component. So under the trans water transfer component, there, there are environmental, social and public health issues. We have um, the we have already done the impact studies and action plans. There is construction of advanced infrastructure, and then the main works, which include the Budihadi Dam construction and the transfer tunnel. We also have um, a planned feeder roads and minor bridges uh, contract, which is going to be implemented to ensure that we restore access to the communities that we have affected as a result of the dam impoundment. Um, the hydropower component has uh, recently been approved uh, for design, so we are currently procuring consultants that are going to design the, the hydropower uh, study, I mean the hydropower component at Ox Oxbow in Botabote. So um, the map is just indicating where the Budihadi Dam is going to be located in relation to the current um, dams that have already been com completed, which is the Katsi Dam and the Mohale Dam. Um, this uh, slide just gives you an overview of uh, the different work packages that we have in the in the in the project uh, in phase two. Uh, you will see from the middle of the slide uh, at the top, it's our A1 road, which comes from Botabote all the way to the Mkhodron town. So we are going to construct uh, three major bridges uh, along that road, uh, the Kubedu Bridge, um, Mabunyanem Bridge, which is somewhere next to Mabun to Kubedu, and as well as the big uh, Singu Bridge, which is going to to cross uh, the reservoir on the way to Mokotro. Um, we also are currently in the process of constructing a, what we call the Budihadi Northeast Access Road. We we call it the Pinia, which uh, starts from the small town of Mapolaning to the dam area. And then we have already completed the 33 kV power line, which came from from Kukwing, where the current LED offices are located, uh, uh, over to to the site establishment area. And then on the western side, we we have um, the 132 kV power line, which was constructed from Hasishude to the dam area, as well as the Udihadi Western Access Road, which uh, connects uh, Hasishude to the project area from the main road on the western side to Gatsi. So you will see also at the center of the slide, uh, the location of the Budihadi Dam, as well as where the transfer tunnel will start uh, all the way to the to the western side. Uh, for for today's uh, interest, the the site establishment area is being uh, pointed at by Frank on the slides to indicate where our main focus for this uh, contract is. Okay, briefly taking you on the progress to date. Procurement started in way back in 2014, and we have procured quite a number of consultants, uh, including the engineering and environmental and social uh, consultants. We have already undertaken environmental and social baseline studies. There has been uh, ongoing community consultations uh, since uh, the start of the project and we are still, we, we, we continue to do that. And uh, this contract is going to, to also input into our community consultations because we are going to be working amongst our communities and affect uh, the way that they are living as Frank has already indicated. 
Um, a contractor was has been engaged who was demarcating the reservoir. You will see uh, for those of you who will be able to go to the site visit that there are beacons around the the reservoir area that indicate the where the the full supply will be, and it's a it's five meters above the full supply of the of the reservoir. Uh, we engaged uh, resettlement action plan consultants who have uh, undertaken asset registration, and they are in the process of developing resettlement action plans. Like some of the the consultants, the rep consultants have, have already uh, completed their work and their contracts have been closed off. But uh, contract 6015 is our current ongoing rep consultant and um, they will be supervising the works of, for this contract. Um, we are in the process of developing socioeconomic development plans as a way of LHDA uh, mitigating against the, the impacts in the projects as well as enabling the communities to have access to, to more economic activities around the area. We have done geotechnical investigations for the different components of the project and undertaken environmental and social impact assessments for different components and developed environmental management plans and different environmental action plans, including public health action plans and livelihood restoration plans. Um, we have engaged consultants that have designed different components like the roads um, and um, the dam and tunnel construction supervision consultants. So we are in the process of procuring contractors for the main works who are going to be starting soon, the dam, the tunnel, and the major bridges as well. And uh, there is ongoing infrastructure construction on site. And some of you will be able to see that when they go to site. Uh, on environmental and social issues, uh, we have been uh, really busy since uh, 2014, as I indicated. We have developed uh, different policies, such as the environmental policy, the compensation policy, public health policy, and different uh, policies as well, just so that we, we have that framework that guides us as a project on how we want to, to do those, uh, to implement those aspects. So emanating from the policies, we have developed plans, uh, action plans, as I have indicated. And uh, we are in the process of um, implementing some of these uh, action plans, such as uh, we have a, a consultant that has been engaged to implement the public health action plan. LHDA is implementing the, the wetlands management plan in-house uh, through the so a field-based office of in in of when, as I indicated. Uh, the slide is just showing you the the richness of biodiversity that we have on site, and we urge our different service providers to ensure that they familiarize themselves with what's uh, available in the project area and ensure that we protect this uh, these species that are of importance in the country. I did indicate the fact that we have been engaging with the community since the beginning of uh, the project. We have a communication protocol which uh, guides us on how um, we, we communicate to different stakeholders. So we have um, an office at Blokwing, as I have indicated, we call it the Bulihari Field Operations Branch. It is managed by Ndate Gerard Mokoni, who was unable to join us today. But his team is very key to, to especially engaging with the communities out there. We urge each, each service provider to make sure that they get introduced to this office so that uh, whatever activities that they will be doing on site will be known and can be coordinated 
especially the community engagement activities. Uh, it's also good for, for, for service providers to be introduced because uh, as uh, Frank has shown you, we, we are working in a very remote and rural area. So anything can happen, you know, there can be accidents, there can be uh, all sorts of things. So if they know that you are there as a service provider, at least if something happens, uh, you will be able to get assistance. So we urge uh, our service providers to make prior arrangements when they go to site for, for the reasons that I have just raised. We have established area liaison committees in the different communities that we are working. And this body is very key in, in, in community engagement because they are representatives from the different communities made up of um, councillors, chiefs, and they, they really are very helpful in, in assisting us in making sure that uh, we, we engage our communities in a meaningful way. Um, we have what we call the land access protocol that we have developed as a, as a project to, to say if um, a service provider needs to have access to a particular piece of land which has not previously been acquired through the resettlement action planning process, um, then they, they need to be adhering to this protocol. It, it, it's important that uh, as service providers, you don't just uh, go in the communities and start uh, doing whatever that we, we want to do because uh, it's, it's really an issue of us being respectful to the communities that we are working within. We, you can imagine how one would feel if, um, how you would feel actually if somebody would just come into your yard and start bulldozing um, or in your field somewhere out there. So we want to make sure that whatever that we do, we, we respect the communities that we are working with and we, we do things systematically so that we can be able to manage any complaints that can come as a result of our activities. This one is, is basically mostly for, for, for big construction contracts where we, we need to make sure that um, if we are going to undertake activities that may potentially affect the properties of um, the communities, we, do a, a, we, we make sure that we have records of what the condition of those properties uh, was before, during and after we, we do our activities. So it's a very important document as well that we need to be following if you feel, if we believe that the, the activities that we are going to do are going to affect people's properties, such as their houses. Uh, another key document that you, as a service provider, you need to be following is a, a labor recruitment guideline, which we have developed in order to guide our, con, uh, our service providers on how uh, recruitment of labor in the project is supposed to be undertaken. We have uh, engaged uh, a Budihadi labor recruitment desk, which is responsible for, for managing the recruitment of unskilled labor in the project area. So there is a standardized formal process on how unskilled labor is to be engaged. So the su successful service provider for this contract needs to be introduced to this uh, a service desk and make sure that uh, when they recruit unskilled labor, they follow uh, and the steps that have been outlined in the guideline. Um, the, there are other categories of labor, such as uh, skills, semi skilled, and professional uh, skills. So, all we are saying as a project is. Let's make sure that we have a, we follow a transparent recruitment process, which can be auditable at the end of the day. Uh, we we make sure that whatever that we are doing at, uh, as service providers, such as catering, you know, cleaning uh, services, let's let's um, let's have a, a a transparent process, which includes. Uh, which can ensure that even the locals 
have access to information that there's a, a vacant position uh, for at this contract or there's an opportunity for cleaning services so that they can be able to apply and be part of the, the recruitment process because the, the labor recruitment and and the service providers uh, engagement involvement in the project have been the the key complaints that we have been receiving from the communities out there so we need to be managing those things by following the guidelines that LHD have have developed in managing those things lastly uh we we have developed a, a safety health and environmental environmental and quality framework which uh, we have developed so that we can standardize the activities within the project. Uh, you will realize in the tender documents that you are going to be producing an environmental management or method statement and the health and safety method statement. So these uh, documents are going to be reviewed by by the consultant, by Lima Taha, to make sure that they are aligned with uh, the national and best practice uh, guidance. So we are going to to make to audit this uh, uh, compliance with those documents, just to make sure that you really comply with what you had committed to do, and we we. We emphasize on issues of reporting on the check issues so that we are confident that indeed our service providers are implementing the, the tools that they have um, developed as part of their contracts. Um, thank you very much, Frank. I'll go hand over to Eddie or Mempo to finalize the, the last two slides. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mema Kananelo. My name is Eddie Barensler, and I also work with Mema Kananelo in the project management unit. Um, and Frank is our main reset. Frank and his team is our main resettlement consultant at the moment that we we work with and supervise their activities. Uh, just very briefly, um, two slides I want to talk through. First of all, the anti-corruption policy. Um, those of you living in Lesotho who, who have followed uh, the LHWP will know that um, phase one was quite heavily tainted by corruption. Um, following that, um, the uh, LHDA and the Commission and the two governments took a, a very serious stance on the matter and produced an anti-corruption policy. It is included in the your specific tender documentation. Um, you need to make sure that you ad adhere to the anti-corruption policy. There will be zero tolerance for for any um, um, corruption activities that that may come up. You've got to disclose a pot your potential conflict of interest. I think it is highly likely that some people or organisations working on such a big project. You know they have got um, links with other companies probably already working on the contract, etc. So I, it is really important that you you declare any potential conflict of interest. And there is a COI <clears throat> declaration in your tender document. Rather declare what you think could be a potential uh, conflict of interest. And in that way, it can be taken further. If you do not declare, and we um, we um, then see there is a conflict of interest, you're going to be disqualified. Your tender will be disqualified. Um, all the contract will be then uh, terminated. So please read the anti-corruption policy um, carefully. And if you even vaguely think you have conflict of interest, declare that and then it can be managed. Thanks, Frank, for going to the second one, the preferential procurement. Um, as you know, this is a contract between a, a, a major project between South Africa and 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 Lesotho, and the phase two agreement, uh, Article 10 specifically, um, specifies how preferential procurement will work on the contract. 
Um, it really is to ensure that the two countries um, benefit uh, equally from, from the implementation of phase two. Article 10 uh, talks specifically on competitiveness, transparency, cost effectiveness and quality. So these are the guiding principles that, that, the, that the procurement procedure follows. The order of preference is Lesotho, South Africa, other SADC countries, and then other countries. The preference margins are there to encourage capacity building and economic growth, both in South Africa and specifically in Lesotho as well. On the big um, infrastructure contracts, the share is 50-50, again, to maximize procurement opportunities, minimize utilization of important imported goods, skills and labor, and to maximize skills and technology, technology transfer. Um, Frank will later on, when he gets to the detail, um, discuss specific requirements related to this particular contract. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Eddie. And um, to be tenderous, we, this is the uh, general overview that we have uh, listened to. Uh, the next couple of slides um, are a particular overview of the tender uh, document that was uh, provided and that most of you uh, have downloaded um, in the last couple of days. The um, presentation will have a, a couple of slides, um, specific to, uh, some practical sort of uh, information around the tender documents. The site location, that might be a bit of an overlap with what we have already seen. We'll skip through that quickly. Um, some information about the scope of work, um, any special services that are required, the tender procedures, um, and the evaluation process that will be followed for this particular tender, the form of contract, um, and some more information about the site visit that was not uh, reflected in the tender document. And then some final remarks, and after that, you'll be um, able to uh, pose your, your question and answers. Uh, or, well, you will pose your questions, and we'll uh, uh, provide some, some answers where, where that's um, uh, available and possible. The tender documents are, uh, of course, available at no cost from the um, uh, internet, from the LHA website. Uh, this is the website uh, that uh, you will be able to um, access. When you uh, get to the tender documents, you will find a zip uh, file called 6015B tender documents. Um, you can download that. Uh, once you have downloaded it and you uh, open it or you extract it, because it's a zip folder, uh, you should have three uh, documents in there, a Microsoft Word uh, document and then a PDF document and an Excel file that contains the bill of uh, quantities. The tender documents may also be obtained from the LSA offices uh, during normal office hours. Uh, the uh, uh, cost is a thousand maloti uh, that has to be deposited in the banking uh, account and the documents with a physically collected or um, downloaded are available until the 14th of uh, November. When you collect the documents, <clears throat> uh, you will not find an, an envelope with printed documents. It will be a very small flash drive uh, that will contain all the documents um, that are also available on the, on the website. The overview, this is uh, really just a repetition. Our project area is here, my series is here. Uh, so that's uh, the location uh, in, in a broad term. More specifically, um, there was already a reference made to the site establishment area. Uh, Mapulaneng that was referred to is, is, is in this vicinity here. Um, and then uh, there's a new road being constructed, the Pinier, as was referred to, and that will take you to the site establishment area. And the site establishment area is really uh, this, this area here. And then more uh, closer to home, 
the actual impact area for the uh, for this tender um, are the uh, bureau grants um, and and graveyards and and homesteads as indicated here Tuarabue, uh, Medin and Madingwaneng sort of in this area and the new uh, proposed uh, bureau grant is, is this red um, hatched uh, 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 graphic here and then the uh, Masakung and Hachakola uh, graveyards uh, in this area here and this hatched area will be the new bureau grant um, for, um, for mostly these graves. The distance, this, I mean, if you look at the scale, this, this line is about two kilometers. So from the furthest point here to there is probably about uh, two kilometers. So anything between one and, and one and a half, probably two kilometers from the actual uh, location of the graves uh, to the new uh, site where, where the graves need to be relocated. This area here, the bottom, is a little bit closer together. There's, there's a slightly larger uh, footprint here. Uh, section 5 of, of the tender document um, gives you all the detail about the scope of work. Um, there are 440 graves and ash heaps uh, to be uh, relocated to two new bureau grounds. Uh, the scope of work is, is um, set out into four tasks. Uh, the first task is uh, probably the most important one um, in terms of uh, getting, getting started. It's the start of an inception. There are a couple of deliverables uh, referred to, uh, not least the uh, various method statements as well as the uh, detailed program um, that you uh, propose to follow in, in getting the work done. Uh, task two, consultation and notification. Uh, please take note of, of the consultations that have already taken place, uh, but also your specific consultations that, that you need to engage with in order to prepare for the, uh, for the next task, which is the physical exhumation and reburial. There are some subtasks there. This is also the task where uh, the this, this specialist uh, services may be required, and I think that will be uh, shown on the next slide. And your last uh, task is, of course, the reporting and the handover of the, of the entire works. There's a protocol for the removal of graves uh, for this phase two. Uh, which will be made available um, as, as an additional um, energy to the uh, tender uh, document. You may want to uh, look at the pictures here. Right on the left is, is a typical graveyard uh, where we have not done any work. Uh, all these stones indicate some graves. Um, on, on the next uh, picture, we were busy uh, registering new graves. Uh, all the graves uh, have a have a peg, uh, a white peg with with a description on it. Uh, all these uh, descriptions are grave uh, uh, registration details, really a, a grave number. Uh, so this is a unique number. Uh, from a more bigger distance, you'll see all these white pegs. Uh, in the graveyards, um, indicating that these graves have been uh, registered. Special consideration must be given to graveyards and homes that are poorly accessible. Not all uh, graves are close to homesteads. Uh, most are, but, but not all of them. Um, there are some areas, especially uh, close to Hatlakola, where, where the access is, is very poor. Uh, you can get there with um, with a vehicle, but um, we will not probably be able to move those graves using a hearse or or anything uh, like that. So you may have to um, make an alternative plan. And you would need to uh, describe such a, a, a arrangement in your in your uh, technical proposal. 
the tender uh, <clears throat> must identify suitable areas for accommodation and any storage uh, facilities that you may require. Um, and if there are any um, uh, areas that need to be acquired temporarily, uh, that will have to happen within uh, the confines of the land access protocol, as Makananela has already um, referred to. Tender is also responsible for the supply of their own water, electricity, uh, their waste management. We have already referred to uh, littering and such things. And where there are any um, uh, licenses or permits um, necessary and required for that, uh, the tender uh, is, is responsible for making provision for that. Specialist services. Um, there's a reference in ITT 28, um, that's the first section of your tender document, uh, to the, um, uh, what do you call it, use of a forensic archaeologist, uh, or perhaps a team. Um, some of the details also refer to in section 7 of the tender document, there's a little bit more description. Um, the specialist or the specialist team may participate in more than one uh, tender, uh, and the experience of the speci uh, specialist service will be considered during the tender evaluation. Archaeological excavation techniques um, are briefly described in section seven of the tender document. Uh, those techniques will be um, applicable for especially the exhumation of all the, all the graves. Here's some more pictures of where the graves are located. This is typically a, a grave uh, yard. Uh, this will be a, the second sort of the middle picture here will be a, an ash heap within the boundaries of a homestead. Uh, and some more a picture around grave, uh, graves and, and the marking of graves. And the last picture on the right is the process that we follow to uh, register um, each grave. So we have a lot of information known about all the graves uh, that will be, um, that must be uh, relocated. Um, the tender document part one, section one has all the instruction to the tenderers as, as referred to, uh, the eligibility uh, for this particular tender is, is described in ITT number three. Uh, of course, Lesotho Nationals and RSA Enterprises are invited to tender, but there is a, a national participation target uh, that is reflected in section two. Uh, national uh, Lesotho National Enterprises uh, are um, expected to uh, comprise 80% of the total tender price. Um, uh, you will have to familiarize yourself with, with the detail in section two uh, specifically. Uh, tenderers are expected to examine, of course, all instructions, forms that are uh, provided and all the terms and specifications uh, that uh, you need to respond to in order to uh, furnish a tender that uh, will be um, acceptable. Clarifications, as indicated earlier, can be requested in writing, uh, nothing via uh, telephone or anything, all in writing um, using the email address 6015 procurement at limataha.co.ls, uh, as referred to earlier. Uh, all the clarifications can be issued no later than 14 days before the uh, closing date, the submission deadline, uh, which um, is about the 31st of October. Uh, I think that is a Monday uh, in this instance. So up to then, you are free to uh, send your um, clarifications via email and uh, these will be responded to. <clears throat> Please don't expect an uh, immediate response to say hi. This, you know, your your um, issue will be attended to, or uh, the the uh, response to your clarification such and such. All the uh, responses will be given formally, 
So it will be through a, an email with a with a, an attached document uh, with a clarification number. And number one was already uh, submitted or, or transmitted, uh, and subsequent transmissions will be made um, as as and when required. The uh, Section 1, the, the instructions also make provision for uh, or uh, provide the detail uh, of, of your actual submission. Um, you will submit a printed original and two printed copies, um, and they should be marked as, as original and copy, and there will all be, also be one electronic copy of your tender in a PDF format on a flash drive or a CD-ROM uh, or whatever electronic device you want to use then. Um, your, the electronic copy on, on the CD drive will also have the Excel format of the uh, BOQ. It's a small document in Excel, uh, so please make sure that that gets uh, copied onto that uh, CD drive as well. Uh, the, uh, electronic, uh, the, the, the printed version of the uh, document will be regarded as the uh, contractual uh, documents that you are submitting. Submission date and time uh, in red here, Monday the 14th of November this year, uh, and the submission time is uh, 2 o'clock. Tenders received after the deadline for submission uh, will not be uh, uh, considered. So please make sure that you uh, submit your tenders on time. The um, tender opening will be done uh, virtually uh, and the link uh, will be made available on the uh, LSA website as indicated below. Uh, the returnable schedules uh, are listed in section three. There are quite a few of them. Uh, you will have uh, 17 of them uh, in your tender document. There's a, a, a new tender uh, schedule that uh, will be issued uh, after this meeting, um, which uh, will refer to the day work rates. Um, so you'll uh, soon um, uh, receive an addendum uh, to that effect. The evaluation uh, process uh, is a five-stage process. Uh, stage one will really be uh, looking at your tender documents, make sure that everything that is required is indeed submitted. Uh, so we refer to that as compliance and eligibility. Uh, please make sure that you uh, use the uh, checklists in the tender document. Uh, the first thing in section three that you uh, Look at that um, checklist to make sure that you uh, tick all the boxes. The technical proposal uh, will be um, evaluated uh, based on the um, uh, items listed in, in under the stage two um, of, of the section. You must score a minimum 60% to actually proceed to stage three. So if you do not score 60% um, on your technical proposal, uh, your tender evaluation will, will be terminated at this point and you will not um, go through stage three, four and five at all. So it's important that you pay attention to the technical proposal and uh, the information that is required there, various method statements, uh, make sure that you write them clearly uh, so that uh, um, we can understand what, what you are uh, proposing so that you can at least uh, meet your, your 60% so that you can move to the, the next uh, stage of the evaluation process. The final score uh, will be um, calculated uh, based on the tender price as well as your your preference. The details are all in your um, tender documents, so you, you don't have to be in the dark with regard to how this tender will be evaluated. The form of contract is um, 
the, the conditions of the contract will are uh, uh, referenced in section nine, and there are a couple of contract forms that are available under section 10. This is a customized contract. Um, so uh, please make yourself uh, uh, familiar with, with the various um, contract articles as they are uh, provided in section nine and the documents as they are available in section 10. Um, the tender document referred to an optional site visit that remains uh, in place, uh, but we uh, will um, issue an addendum uh, shortly that takes the at your convenience <clears throat> option in the tender document away so that we um, um, basically have a single date, uh, a site visit date, which is next week, Tuesday, the 25th of October uh, at 10 o'clock, uh, where we will uh, meet at the uh, Tlokweng office of LHDA. And from there, we'll introduce you to a, a site visit program and take you around to uh, the various uh, places that we think are, are necessary uh, to uh, to see. Uh, please do not make individual arrangements as indicated in the tender document. Um, and you can diarize in the meantime, the 25th of, of October as the date for the site uh, visit. We've made this change really in uh, recognition of, of the busy schedules that everyone has, including yourself as tenderer but specifically also the LHA team on site. Uh, so we, instead of having um, staff having to attend to various um, of these uh, meetings with individual tenderers, we thought it more uh, time efficient to um, arrange for a single date uh, and time uh, so that everybody who is interested in uh, going to sites and seeing where the grave uh, yards are and what the impacts are um, to, to then be uh, present there on this uh, one day, the 25th of uh, October. Uh, please make sure that you attend on time um, uh, so that we can uh, all leave the Tlokweng office uh, in convoys and, and take it to the, to the various places. Uh, final remarks, by the way, it's, it's quite uh, appropriate to uh, refer or point you to this, this marker here. Uh, these are the type of, of um, uh, markers that are uh, placed uh, along the entire um, uh, reservoir demarcation line. That's just five vertical meters above the full supply level. Um, the minutes of this meeting will be prepared and made available um, on, on the um, website, as well as the audio recording, uh, which will be uh, uploaded on the website. It will be a fairly substantial uh, document uh, or recording file, uh, so just be aware of that. <clears throat> All the questions, as indicated earlier, will be recorded. Uh, with the responses um, either uh, given today and they will be um, edited and, and, and formalized in a document after this uh, meeting. Also, please visit the LSA website uh, for all clarifications and uh, addenda as they are issued. Um, they are all available on the um, um, uh, in the uh, website, LSA website, as indicated before, and the link to the tender opening will also be available on that uh, website um, closer to the time uh, on the 14th of November. This is the um, end of, of the uh, presentations. If you have any um, questions or issues that you would like to, to raise, uh, you can do so uh, in the chat box. Um, so far, there, there's nothing um, in the chat box. Um, so we'll um, open this for, for a little while. 
so that you can type your your questions in here and uh, we will then uh, respond to uh, uh, to them in due course. So please um, um, proceed with, with asking your questions. I see there's one question in the uh, chat box. Does the process include permit applications for the uh, grave relocation? Um, my colleagues can chip in, um, but the um, formal application to the Ministry of, of Health uh, for the um, global sort of grave relocation of, of the 440 graves uh, will be uh, handled by um, LSDA, uh, but once the um, tenderer has has um, prepared, um, or let's say the successful service provider, maybe I should say the contractor, when they have prepared the uh, detailed schedule of when the the individual graves will be relocated, so that's after your your uh, plan and, and program has been um, uh, approved by LSA, um, you'll then be required to notify the various uh, departments um, of, of the uh, start of the physical relocation of graves. Uh, so that program will be uh, your responsibility to communicate to uh, the various uh, departments and, and ministries and so on. The second um, is, let me just open this up. Uh, on the Excel sheet and the 10 documents, the price for coffins is fixed at 6,000. Are we going to be allowed to give our own uh, prices? Um, the um, uh, price that was provided uh, was essentially um, uh, based on uh, previous uh, tenders. Uh, we also want to uh, make sure that we get uh, um, an, an, uh, an equal level in terms of, of, of tender pricing. This is obviously a, an item that will uh, uh, may vary. Uh, so um, we propose that if there's any deviation from this, uh, that you uh, make that clear in, um, in your tender documents. Um, if you um, consider that uh, the price that is provided in the BOQ is, is way below what you can uh, uh, cater for, uh, then I think that needs to be uh, made very clear in your tender, tender documents. Please confirm the site visit date. Uh, again, it's the 25th of October. Uh, that's next week, Tuesday, uh, and we will all meet uh, at the uh, clocking office of LSDA. Um, so 21st of October uh, at 10 o'clock. The date and time will be issued in an addendum um, after this meeting. So um, it, it will be available um, in writing to everyone as well. Um, 
The other question from the BOQ 1.1.2, the remuneration for community liaison and, uh, and specialists, can this be taken by LSA? I'm not entirely sure um, uh, what, what you're referring to. The liaison um, person um, is, is a person, uh, one or more, I think there's even a, a, a clarification there in, in the BOQ. This person will be part of your, uh, of your team, so you need to make, make provision for, for that person. Um, the um, other uh, questions here, how many lots of packages do you have for this project or is it meant for one tender? Um, uh, this is one tender, uh, of course the tender makes provision for the joining of, uh, of, of hands in, in joint ventures. Uh, and uh, there's no limit to the number of participants in the uh, joint venture. So it is um, issued as one tender. Um, and the uh, tender will be issued either to an individual tender, if, if that's how the tender has been submitted, or uh, to the joint venture, if that is how the uh, tender is structured. Um, has uh, but security is, is explained in, in your uh, tender document, um, uh, so there, there should be a reference in your tender documents. I don't have it right here in front of me, uh, but if you read the tender documents, you will see there's, there's a, a, a tender security declaration. Has the stakeholder engagement process been just open it up here completed or does this form part of the social consultation component of the tender for example the the wake fee negotiations has been that been completed that um, is considered to be part of of the uh, stakeholder engagement prior uh, to the tender the especially the fee negotiations those those fees are are fixed by LSA and they will be made uh, available or paid um, before the, the actual um, uh, uh, funeral um, uh, arrangements um, are to be uh, confirmed, the actual reburial as, as such. Um, as a side visit, that a side visit is optional or mandatory? It's optional, it's not mandatory, and, and that will be uh, uh, stated in the addendum um, as well. I don't see any further, unless I need to scroll down. No, I don't see any further further questions. Um, um, Eddie, I don't know if you have anything uh, you want to add uh, to the responses that um, I've uh, provided here. Uh, thank you, Frank. Um, I, I think you will probably um, repeat what I'm going to say now, but all of these questions will obviously now be, you know, we'll do a formal um, we'll formalize it whereby um, the, the questions and the answers coming from the client will be um, submitted to all of the um, the people who have registered for, for this tender, um, including issues such as the fixed price for the coffin, um, uh, the process of community consultation that had occurred to date, etc. So I think just just that reminder that, that we will formalize these questions and, and responses. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, Eddie. I see there are uh, one or two more questions concerning key personnel. Should the project manager, archaeologist, supervisor, and mortician have professional qualifications? Um, I think the details are provided in the uh, tender documents. Uh, obviously, an archaeologist is, is a profession, uh, so for, for those um, um, individuals, there will be a, a need for uh, proof of, of professional qualifications as, as required. Um, the other one, do we have to make RSVP for the site visit? Um, no, you can um, essentially just um, arrive on the 25th. Um, that's why we make the time um, uh, available to you at 10 o'clock. 
if you are there at 10 o'clock on the 25th, uh, we take it that you are interested in, in uh, attending. If you are not there, um, uh, you need to hurry up if you are late, or otherwise we take it that you are not um, interested in attending. So if you are there by 10 o'clock on the 25th, uh, we take it that you are a part of the uh, site visit. Those are the questions that I can see. I don't see any uh, further uh, questions. Um, there's a hand. Well, the hand will have to be converted into a question. We don't um, attend to hands. I'm sure that hand was uh, raised in error and has now been converted into a, uh, a chat uh, question. Right, I think um, if there are no uh, further questions, maybe I should give it another 30 seconds. Um, but otherwise, if there are no further uh, questions, I see the hand is, is lowered, uh, then I would um, like to thank you for attending this uh, meeting. Um, uh, please, if you have any further uh, need for clarifications, feel free to use the email address as, as indicated. Maybe I can just scroll uh, one. Uh, it's more than one back. Where's that tender? There you go. Um, so please feel free to send us your, your, your questions uh, for clarification uh, so that we can uh, provide you with uh, the answers. Uh, note that the uh, tender submission date is on the 14th of November, so you have uh, slightly less than a month um, left for that. Uh, so we uh, wish you all the best uh, and are looking forward to receiving your, your, your tenders um, on, on the 14th. Thank you very much. <laughs>